Warren with 17 career starts. They've done an excellent job against these talented wideouts, particularly of late. That's the second interception return for a touchdown this year for Alexander. He took one back 42 yards against Alabama for a score. When we talk about third downs, since Florida State's first drive, when they were three for three, they have gone four of 11 now for the game. And so in the third down situations, Florida has really started to take control there with their defense and no bigger play on third down than the one right there by Alexander. Steve Spurrier said at the beginning of the year, with such a young and experienced defense, we may have to score a lot of points to win games. Well, over the last five games, it's been the defense growing up in a hurry, carrying the Florida offense. I think, going back to the first play out of the locker room, Marquand Manuel's play on Peter Warwick, chasing him all over the field, set the tempo for this second half for the Florida defense. Chandler with another kick into the end zone. Jermaine Stringer for a yard or two deep. Has a hole. And a good tackle made in that seam because... Had Todd Johnson not made that tackle, Stringer might have been off to the races. Tomorrow on the CBS Sports Spectacular, members of the 1999 World Cup Championship team, including Mia Hamm, square off indoors to get some of the best international players in the Toys R Us victory tour tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern time on the CBS Sports Spectacular. And this is another in the long list of spectaculars between FSU and Florida. Cheney. And running back as Wanky goes out of the shotgun and finds Robert Morgan. He's out to the 33. And he appears to have the first down. For Chris Wanky, an opportunity to work under adverse circumstances. Mark Rick said it was good that we had the game at Clemson that we did. A hostile environment. They were playing us off our feet. Wanky had to get us together to get us to win that football game. They were down at Virginia in the first half. He brought him back. First and ten. The rush. Well picked up. And Ron Dugans goes out of bounds at the 42, a little bit short of the first down. We flash back to 1993, Florida State then number one, Florida number seven. Florida State led 27-21 in the fourth quarter. Charlie Ward hooked up with Warwick Dunn, a 79-yard touchdown down the sideline. And the Seminoles won 33-21. They went on to win the national championship. That was the last time the visiting team won in this rivalry. Inside handoff to Jeff Cheney. He has the first down and more in the Florida territory at the 48-yard line. One thing you got to remember about Chris Wanky is that this is by far the biggest game that he's ever played in. He got hurt in the Virginia game last year, so he did not play in this game against Florida. He did not play in the national championship game against Tennessee. So this year, the Florida game, the biggest game of Chris Wanky's career at Florida State. 27-year-old quarterback from St. Paul, Minnesota. Throws a lateral to Warwick with some space. He runs out of bounds. Didn't want to take on the defender, Benny Alexander. Settled for a gain to the 44-yard line. A pickup of four. Down to 6.37 left in the third. Florida leads by three. What's Alex Brown doing? This time they go with the cut block. They're giving him a lot of different looks. You know, you respect a player by doing different things to him. Showing him different blocking schemes. Bringing different people at him. That time they cut it. It catches 52 yards for Warwick. They blow the play dead. Florida called a timeout before the snap. So they've done a good job on Warwick in those yards after the catch that you were talking about. Eight catches, but 52 yards, a low total to go with eight receptions. Jeff Cheney lined up to Winky's left. They pitch it to Warwick. First down, a great move, and they slide down at the 34-yard line. First down at the 34, here's Ed Cunningham. Hey, guys, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's gotten a skosh noisy down here on the field. Eric Thomas, the senior center, is doing a great job with a silent snap count. They've used it every snap during this drive. He looks up at Winky's foot. As soon as he raises his head, he snaps the ball, but he also waits for a second, and that's drawn Florida offside. He's done a fantastic job the whole game. 
The coaches were praising Thomas in our meetings this week for his great senior leadership. That offensive line. Morgan battling for an extra yard or two. Robert went out of bounds near the first down marker at the 25. And an impressive drive by Chris Winky and the Seminoles after they squander the lead for the first time today. Morgan just short of the first down marker. And it'll be second down and less than a yard. Warwick lined up as the quarterback in the shotgun. This is smart, Sean. Get him the football in some different spots. They're ready for him, and they drop him for a loss. Eugene McCaslin, a big play. Back to the 32-yard line. John Hope said McCaslin was one of the guys who would have to play big today. This is an outstanding play coming from the inside linebacker spot on the blitz. Warwick normally can make you miss, but that guy's a pretty good athlete, too. McCaslin was the starting running back in this ballgame last year. Makes a big play as a linebacker. From second and one to third down and eight. Four-man rush. Winky out of the gun. Dumps it short, and Andre Davis leveled Jeff Cheney from behind. Right at the line of scrimmage, the 32, Coach Bowden has a decision to make. This would be about a 49-yard field goal, and certainly Janikowski has the leg to get that done and tie up the ball game. Two good plays by two linebackers in a row. First we saw McCaslin, now Davis with the big hit after the short catch by Cheney. Good defensive hold by the Gators. This is a 49-yard try. Marcus Outson, the holder. Janikowski bidding to tie it. How good are these two kickers? Wow. Flag down. Flag down. They took too long to get it off. It won't count. Delay of game against Florida State. Delay of the game. On the offense. Now he's going to have to move back into the 53. 54 yard range which he can do he's been perfect under 45 yards this year he certainly has the leg to make this kind of a kick there isn't much breeze in the stadium we checked in the shell and that earlier they said down to the field really not much of a factor but what little breeze there is is into Janikowski's face his career long is 56 sometimes the tendency on a longer field goal like this is to Kick it a little bit lower to try to drive the ball. Let's see if Florida gets some push up on the inside to anticipate a lower kick. This is a 54-yard try officially. It'll be as long as for the season. He made a 56-yarder in 97. That ball is wow. good. Look at the man. Janikowski from 54 yards to tie the game at 16. Hall of Fame presents Glenn Close, Christopher Walken, and Jack Palance in a television event, Sarah Plain and Tall, Winter's End, CBS. And, you know, they made him use his mulligan, <laughs> even after he hit the first one right in the middle of the fairway, so he hit another one right down the middle. I'll tell you, we have seen some outstanding kicking in this ball game. Coming into today, Janikowski led the nation in field goals per game. Jeff Chandler was fourth in the nation in field goals per game. And neither one has disappointed in this ball game so far today. And yet again, this matchup between Florida and Florida State is living up to the advanced billing, as it seems to every year. And it's hard to believe with all the hype that surrounds this game each year. Janikowski, about three yards into the end zone for Bo Carroll. Out to the 24. Here's Jarrell Hudson. 
Made the tackle. Time now for our Army teammate segment. In the 1997 Florida State-Florida game, Steve Spurrier rotated quarterbacks Noah Brindice and Doug Johnson on every play late in the fourth quarter. It was Johnson hooking up with wide receiver Jacquez Green, one of the most memorable plays in the history of this rivalry, a 63-yard reception that set up the winning score, a touchdown run by Fred Taylor with a minute 50 remaining in the game, Taylor's fourth touchdown of the game, and Florida came from behind to win 32-29. to Johnson hands it off straight ahead to Ernest Graham. Noah Brindis still in the program in Florida as a graduate assistant coach. There's Noah with the binoculars. And in that game, in 97, when he rotated play by play with Johnson, he was five for nine for 100 yards. Brindis was a great story. He came here as a walk on yeah. and became a prominent quarterback. He's cut a lot of weight, too. He's got on Steve's uh, everyday workout program for all his coaches, and he's dropped some some weight looks really good. Jesse Palmer on second down. Lots of running room for Graham. He's tripped up from behind by Tommy Pauley, the linebacker, but not before he picked up another first down after a gain of 15. Sean, I felt from watching film of Florida State's defense that they are vulnerable to the screen because they like to come after the quarterback so much. Watch as this comes up the field. Tommy Pauley gets caught inside. And he's concerned about the quarterback, and he loses track of the back coming out of the backfield. And it's a big play on the screen to Ernest Graham. Tremendous speed demonstrated by Polly, who was a terrific basketball player in high school at Dunbar, Baltimore, Maryland. Carry a dump for a loss by Corey Simon. There's a reason why this guy is a two-time All-American. I mean, he is an outstanding player. Watch him explode off the ball in between the guard and center. No chance for Carlisle. And then wraps up the ball carrier. I mean, he is not just big and strong. He is very, very athletic. He's made some incredible plays in different ways this season for the Florida State defense. Very terrific person, too. An excellent student. Going to graduate in December. Very religious young man. Palmer hit as he threw and it is batted down. Daryl Jackson in a battle with Mario Edwards for the ball. Tommy Polly put the hit on Jesse Palmer. But I like what Corey Simon said about the need to stay humble. He took up golf this summer and he's addicted <laughs> to golf now. He said, because it keeps me humble. That's what I use for it too. <laughs> My golf game. Here's Johnson back in on third down and 13. The game tied at 16 in the final three minutes of the third quarter. And Doug Johnson's got to be thinking here, if I get what I want, make the play. If not, don't make a mistake here. Movement might have been on the right side of the offensive line for Florida. Justin Blackshear, perhaps. Sean, I made the point that Corey Simon is a very athletic nose guard. A couple weeks ago against Virginia, he drops into zone coverage and then dives and makes an interception. You don't see many nose guards do that. And then later in the game, right up the gut and blocks a punt. Mm. The guy had double-digit tackles in the game as well from his nose guard position, but he is an incredible athlete for a defensive lineman. He's on the sideline now. On third down and 18, Jesse Palmer. Down the middle, incomplete, looking for Travis Taylor, who was well covered by Reggie Durden. So the Knowles hold on defense. Corey Simon, one of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award. An impressive group. Yeah, the two Penn State guys are... Their season has gone a little bit sour here at the end. That other Corey is a heck of a football yes, player, too. Corey Moore at Virginia Tech. Another outstanding defense this year. Hokies helped their cause for the national championship today. Made them to field with a whooping of Temple. That punt is blocked. Ryan had it blocked. And Florida State will take over at the 21-yard line. It looked like Tommy Pauley again. 
up the middle to block it. They had two block punts last week against Maryland. They had a block punt against Virginia. And Polly is the guy that's going to get it. Watch him get through on the inside here. Gets the great jump, gets to the direct line, and goes for the where the ball's going to be. He doesn't go for the punter. He goes for where the ball's going to come off the foot. That's good aim point for Polly as he stretches out and blocks the kick. Special teams a key. Who would make a big play? Florida State has just made one in the kicking game. Fourth punt that Florida State has blocked first. Punt that Ryan has had blocked this year. Inside handoff to Jeff Cheney. He dances inside the 20 and goes down to the 16-yard line. Boy, did Tommy Pollock make several big plays yes. in a row when they run deep back of a series for him, wasn't and it? And then blocking the punt, the junior from Baltimore, who did play briefly on the Florida State basketball team in his first year on the campus before deciding to concentrate on football full-time. From the 16, second and five. And Kendra ran on late, lined up to the right of Winky. Winky with time, but some confusion between Winky and the receivers. Nobody near that aerial. That'll be third down and five. Winky, 21 of 32 passing. Bobby Bounds offense. Three higher trips into the red zone. Has scored one touchdown and has kicked two field goals. Big third down play here for Florida State. Five of 12 now in the ball game. After a three for three start. Yep. Flag down along the line of scrimmage. Another flag thrown to the offensive backfield. Cheney knocked down short of the first down, but there are two flags on the play. Benny Alexander and Marquand Manuel might have put a pretty good lick on Cheney. I think they're both going to go against Florida State. motion on the offense all sides on the defense penalties decline repeat third down boy oh boy well, I think Steve agreed with you he thought both were going against the Seminoles Steve made an interesting comment yesterday he said you know we actually this year had a pretty good year with the officials yeah. we've probably gotten more breaks than our opponents from the officials to hear Steve say that was unbelievable but these aren't SEC officials today for them. No, these are ACC officials. Still Jeff Cheney in there. Haven't seen Travis Miner on this possession. Another chance to convert on third down and five. Thank you. Has some running room. He's going to take off. And he has the first down at the 11-yard line, perhaps. Very close. But it looks from here as if he has it. Robert Cromarty chased him out. Wengi runs about a 4 8 40, but swift enough on that play. Well, Alex Brown gets a pretty good charge and forces Wengi up the field, and then Chris makes a good decision here. He sees some open room. He knows he doesn't have the speed to outrun the Florida defense, but can get the first down. Heads up play by Chris Wengi in the red zone. First and 10. Apparently, they could get another first down just shy of the goal line. Cheney bounces it outside. Rides his legs down inside the five to the two where Eugene McCaslin made the tackle. Great run. It, it looked like he was turned in from the sideline and just turned his shoulders back towards the goal line, kept his feet moving and fell forward for about four more yards. Four carries, 31 yards rushing for Jeff Cheney. Penalty was big. It was offsetting penalties, but it still gave Florida State another chance at the third down conversion, and then Knowles capitalized. Cheney, the tailback, running behind Kendra, the fullback. Another flag down. It is a touchdown if the play stands. And I think it will stand based on the reaction of those Gator defenders who could hear the officials conferring. Offside defense, touchdown, and the lead for Florida State. to shift in the position and never really got set. And Florida State was on to their blocks. 
Nice job blocking on the right side by Florida State. Ryan Sprague, the tight end, got a good block. And a couple good runs by Cheney. Janikowski to put the lead back to seven. With 34 seconds left in the third quarter. It's 23-16 FSU. A two-yard touchdown run. And they needed just five plays, 21 yards after the block punt. Take a look at the touchdown again. A little toss sweep out of the eye. Sprague, the tight end, with a nice block. Kendra there just in case anyone else shows up. No one else there. Jason Whitaker, the right guard, got a good block as well. And capitalizing on the big play by the special teams, the Knowles put it in the end zone and take the lead. Travis Miner's understudy, Cheney. Looks like Miner looking just a little bit. We'll get Ed Cunningham on the case. As a matter of fact, Ed's already on the case. Ed. Travis Miner's a little gimpy, Sean. They took him out during that drive. They, he may play later in the game, but he was a little slow, so they wanted Jeff Cheney in for that final drive. All he right. has a right ankle sprain, Sean. Thanks, Ed. So Janikowski will kick off. Capel and Carroll, the two speedy track men. Back at the goal line. The last kickoff by Janikowski was kind of like a pooch kick. It only went two yards deep in the end zone, and it was returnable. He's had four kickoffs this year that go through the uprights. Two others have bounced off the uprights. This one threatened the uprights, and Carroll downed it. 27 seconds left of the third quarter. Number one, Florida State, trying to remain undefeated. With a seven-point lead over number three, Florida, Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Michelle Tafoy, and Ed Cunningham on the sidelines. Delighted to have you with us. For yet another head-to-head -head top ten battle between these two in-state rivals. They managed to put on a show worthy of the incredible hype leading up to the game. Alternating quarterbacks throughout for Florida. It's Doug Johnson taking the first snap. And finding Daryl Jackson, he spins and lunges close to the first down, just shy of the 30. It will be the spot, it'll be second down in inches. On the completion to Jackson, the junior from Tampa, he was a terrific basketball player in high school, averaged 23 points a game as a junior. Had many top football basketball schools recruiting him as a two-sport athlete. He came here just to concentrate on football. The end of the third quarter has arrived with Florida State still leading 23 to 16. We'll return to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. Uh, my driving test kind of got off to a bad start. On calls like this, you want to talk a while. That's why it's always a good idea to dial 10-10-3-2-1. Well, I, I thought I was in first. With 10-10-3-2-1, you save 50% on calls over 10 minutes. But that's just eight. Season, the faithful here in the swamp saw their 30-game home winning streak snapped by Alabama. They don't want to see a second loss at home. Their team's down by seven. Jesse Palmer going deep. It is caught along the far sideline by the tight end, Kirk Wells. Out of bounds at the 32-yard line of Florida State. by Wells as you see him coming off holding that shoulder here he is here watch him run the little wheel route fakes the out route and then up the sideline the outside receiver comes in on the post and then as he outruns the linebacker a perfect throw to Kirk Wells outstanding throw as he outran the safety Chris Hope for the big completion 39 yard gain longest reception of Wells career Johnson going for the end zone and it is knocked down wow what a play by play. Tay Cody, back cuddling, knocked it down when it looked like Travis Taylor was perfectly positioned for the game time touchdown. Yeah, this ball had a bead right to Travis Taylor, and Cody at the last minute, at the height of his jump, gets his hand on the football and knocks it away. Great effort by Cody at the height of his jump to get a hand on the ball. 
They'll set up second and ten. The opening seconds of the fourth quarter. Florida State has led through most of this game. Jesse Palmer under a blitz. Swings it out to Bo Carroll. Great cut to the inside. Bo Carroll still on his feet and down at the seven yard line. Derek Gibson saved the touchdown. What a great play call by Steve Spurrier. It's against a blitz. Normally you keep your back in to block the blitz, but they run him away from the blitz. And Palmer just has to back up enough to get the football to Bo Carroll. Normally if the back's on that side, he's going to block the blitz. They went away from the blitz. And Bo Carroll shows you what he can do in the open field after he catches the football. Great play call at the right time, and then well executed by the Gators. Carroll limped off after the tackle. A 25-yard gain and a timeout used by Florida. Back to the swamp after this. Looks ready to return. No timeouts left for Florida now with 14-15 remaining. First and goal. Johnson's pass incomplete. No flags. Mario Edwards with excellent coverage on Travis Taylor. And this is where Doug Johnson needs to keep his head together. We've seen him do this a couple times. Get upset with a call. Go after the official. Got to keep his composure here, even though he's coming out on the next play. Here's the contact up here on the inside slant. There is contact. There is a hand on the jersey. Mario Edwards. He's all over him. You can yeah. see Steve Spurrier's lips. And I think Steve was right. Johnson's right, but you're right. He has to stay poised. Yeah. Johnson's a lot like Steve Spurrier. Yeah, he is. From a personality standpoint. Very, very competitive, very feisty. Second and goal. Jesse Palmer now in there. The blitz. Great call. The tight end, Kenny, stuffed at the goal line. And a flag down. Derek Gibson with a huge hit on the 272-pounder, Kenny who looked certain to rumble in for the tying score. Gibson just 207. Stood him up at the goal line. Well, holding on the offense. Another critical penalty holding against Florida. 12 penalties against the Gators for 78 yards. It happened right here in the middle. Corey Yarbrough, after he snapped the ball, again, the quick burst by Simon up the field. And you see the left arm of Yarbrough around the neck of Corey Simon. A good call by the officials. Just the great anticipation in getting off the football by Corey Simon. Very tough for the center to make that block. Both teams heavily penalized today. Doug Johnson in at quarterback. They're back at the 18-yard line, second and goal. Johnson gets it off. Caught by Rod Frazier. Just his second touch of the year. He has no carries and now two receptions. Jerry Johnson had Doug Johnson wrapped up, but Doug got the ball off for a gain to the 13-yard line. Kirk Wells just went to the floor in a dressing with a backup tight end appeared to injure his shoulder on the long reception down the far sideline a moment ago. Well, this is good presence by Johnson. It's a little bit like Brett Favre. You see him do that a lot in the NFL, going down to the ground and just kind of flipping it forward to the back. Good job of avoiding the negative yardage play on the sack by Doug Johnson. Well, Tafoya tells us Kirk Wells has a broken collarbone and is gone, obviously, for the rest of the day. They need to snap it. It looked like they got it off. And here come the officials. And they had no timeout, so Palmer could not call a timeout to avoid the penalty. It's a delay of game penalty. So the play does not stand. And the Florida offense will have another shot at it. And the 13th penalty on the Florida Gators. I mean, Florida State is tough enough to beat their defense, but when you help them with penalties, it's very tough. They just didn't get the playoff in time. And Spurrier's reaction. Now it's Johnson back in. The ball back at the 18 again. Third down and goal. 12 and a half minutes left in regulation time. Johnson with a lot of time. 
Zips one, intercepted at the goal line by Chris Hope. Second interception thrown by Doug Johnson. Fourth interception of the season for Hope, the sophomore from Rock Hill, South Carolina. And Sean, he just forced it. I mean, he's going for Daryl Jackson. He's trying to get the touchdown, and Daryl Jackson is not open. Chris Hope is in front of the receiver, and Doug Johnson, rather than dropping it off and kicking the field goal, gets a little greedy, and now the Gators come away with nothing. Hope, the former USA Today, All-American and South Carolina State Player of the Year as a senior in high school. Played last year as a true freshman in every game as a backup of free safety. Huge interception. Marcus Outson is at quarterback from the two. He's in there to sneak it and get perhaps a yard. Andre Davis, Keith Kelsey leading the defensive surge. And not only has Hope been a standout on the field, but he's been boning up in the classroom. He is our Rigid Tool Scholar Athlete Award winner. The free safety, 3.5 grade point average in undergraduate studies. Rigid Tool's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Florida State's General Scholarship Fund. Winky's pass incomplete, thrown at the feet of Peter Warwick. And a big play here. Florida would love to force a punt from the back line to the end zone again. Yeah, the good news for the Gators is there's a lot of time left, and they, if they can hold here, they'll get good field position again if they can force a punt. Wanky with Cheney and Kendra. In the eye behind him, still no Travis Miner with that ankle injury. Cheney just didn't escape the end zone. Keith Kelsey hit him very near the goal line. Cheney got it back out to the three, but they'll have to punt from the back line to the end zone again. Well, a couple things on this interception. The tight end and the back are kind of the check downs, but Doug Johnson's going for the touchdown. If it's there, great on the third and long. But if it's not there, maybe you got to look for someone to dump it off to. Good coverage by the Seminoles, but you can't throw it into coverage and come away with nothing to show for it. Cottrell's had a great day punting, averaging better than 51 per boot. Both pairs standing at the FSU 45. Another good punt. And a fair catch. He had 10 yards of running room and made the fair catch at midfield. He cost himself at least seven or eight yards on a return. Nobody near him. A 48-yard punt. Another beauty by Cottrell. The Florida State defense will be defending a short field as Florida takes over at its own 49-yard line after the excellent punt by Cottrell out of the back of the end zone. Ernest Graham is the tailback. Doug Johnson faked it to him and threw over the middle to Rod Frazier. He was chopped down by Cleveland Thomas. Live aerial views of the swamp are provided by Budweiser's own Bud One airship. Proud supporters of college athletics. Now, Sean, this game has so much significance all around the country and in the state of Florida. I mean, so many of these players are familiar with each other. I mean, 48 starters in the game, 35 of them played high school football in the state of Florida. A lot of them know each other, played against each other. A lot of bragging rights in this football game. Palmer hands off to Ernest Graham. He is stacked up short of a first down at the 43. Another big play on defense by Chris Hope. And here's Tim Brando. Sean and Todd, Notre Dame will be home for the holidays for the second time in three years. The reason, Boston College. Tim Hasselbeck here to Jamal Burke, 34 yards. BC's now 8-2, and two, could be headed to the Gator or the Insight.com. And don't forget, many of you will see Boston College against number two Virginia Tech. Big game where the BCS is concerned, or Arkansas LSU on Friday on CBS. What a job Tom O'Brien and his staff have done at Boston College. The scandal-ridden program, and now they're 8-2. and two. Ripping through the middle, first down, Ernest Graham to the 30-yard line. Hope and Durden made the tackle, a rumble of 13 for the redshirt freshman. 
Well, the center got caught with the hold. This time he gets a great block on Corey Simon, turns him to the outside, and that allows Ernest Graham to get in behind his center. Nice block by Corey Yarbrough on Corey Simon, and a big run for the Florida Gators. 41 yards rushing for Graham on 10 carries. 83 yards rushing in the game today. Much better than the 17 they posted in Tallahassee last year in their loss for Daryl Jackson. And it's got to be called. No flags again. Very tight coverage by Cleveland Thomas. And I know you're allowed to kind of have some bumping and contact as long as you're on the same plane as the receiver, but man, oh man, this looked like there was too much contact at the end as Jackson's coming back into the football. Second and 10 from the 30. 9.24 remaining. Florida down by a touchdown and out of timeouts. Play clock's going down again. Johnson, the handoff. Bo Carroll spins ahead for nothing. Tommy Polly and Chris Woods in on the stop. It will be third down and 10. And that was a wasted play. I mean, it was second down. They were trying to audible. The play clock was running down, and, and they called a play. You can't afford to just throw plays away. I mean, one of the things that Steve Spurrier is trying to do with this system is to make sure we get in the right plays. That time, they were in a bad play and just wasted a second down play and bring up third and 11. Out of the shotgun, Jesse Palmer. High snap over his head. And he goes down on a knee to field it back at midfield. That takes him out of field goal range. And really, just more of the same, a season-long pattern of critical mistakes at the wrong time by Florida. And that's been the case over and over again today, a 20-yard loss on this play. Well, we've covered Florida five times this year, and they're in the shotgun a good percentage of the time, and we've never seen that one. But that time, Corey Yarborough sailed it over Jesse Palmer's head. The senior experienced center. And here's the punting team. And Ryan just got that one off. That one blocked moments ago. Third and caught it. And returned it to the 22. A 36-yard punt. And a five-yard return by Durden. Steve Spurrier frustrated again today. With 8.02 to play, his team is down by seven. Tried to knock him off his route. He didn't get enough out of him. And again, you can hold him down, you can contain him, but you can never let up on Peter Warwick because he is capable of killing you. No longer is the 11-yard catch the longest of the day for Warwick. That one for 38 yards. Nine catches, 90 yards receiving for Warwick. They're at the 30. In field goal range for Janikowski. Winky takes the play clock down to one. Handed it to Cheney. He broke free from the tackle of Marquand Manuel for a moment. Stumbled ahead for three to the 27. Manuel, the sophomore from Miami, he has 17 brothers and sisters. Right now, Chris Wanky, Sean, is thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my team's momentum, but I'm going to use as much of this play clock as I can. I'm going to go down inside of five seconds as often as I can. Wanky going toward the end zone. Come on! Touchdown reception of the season for the junior from Miami. Janikowski with 6.03 to go. Gives Florida State its largest lead, 14 points now, 30 to 16. Chris Wanky has been terrific, particularly in crucial situations today.